Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Against the Storm, shall we? So we're building new structures to get rid of all the homeless that we've got, and we need to build a small forager's camp and get vegetables. And we are working over here on the camp. However, you can see that it is telling us we don't have any building materials because we're short parts and we're short wood. But if I click on my warehouse, I do have 15 parts. I don't have the wood, but we did verify that the wood is over here. Um, it just, the delivery is in progress. So we'll get there. Have to wait. But I have eight people who are doing no labor. So uh, the villagers should get to that in a moment. Transport that stuff around. Make life better. How did we end up here? No? Okay, there, yeah. They're doing it. There they go. You can see, like, you know, they're carrying wood over here, which will eventually make its way here. They're stacking it up inside the small foragers camp. You could see them putting the logs here. Now they can get underway. So while they're building it, which is phenomenal, um, I want to think about what else do we need to make here. One of the imperatives that you have in Against the Storm, or at least that I like to do, is work every single resource that I've got, because you can use them all. Now, in the tutorial, it might not be necessary for Victory to exploit and take advantage of every single resource that you've got, but as you get further into the game, it's such a great thing to have stockpile, because you'll get traders, you'll get other opportunities to use these, and something about the game is many recipes can take alternatives for their ingredients so you know you might think you have no use for something and then oh i can actually switch what it's using to take up or tap into this stockpile of roots or something like that that i have so i'm going to keep doing this and i'm going to think what do i need to build that i don't have already another thing i really like about the ui is you see how all right, they finished this, and I'll talk about that in a moment. I have two woodcutters camps and one small foragers camp. So they tell you, with this little number in the bottom right corner, when you open this up, how many of each you have. I have four shelters, for example. And I like to use these as indicators of how many do I have. And if I have a zero, I'm like, whoa, can I build that? Am I not getting that? I don't really get behind on that particular resource. So that could be really useful. Now, over here, um, we could see at the foragers camp, it does want humans. The um, bonus here is four humans. So if I put a human, you can see the little farming proficiency which humans have. The wheel goes around them as I tap them into that. And then they'll go ahead and start doing a job that is well suited to them. And at this point, too, uh, because I have, you know, now, even with that, I still have some extra people left over. And we don't have enough houses. We need five to house. It's three for each, so we need high, five to house 15. Let's go ahead and throw down another shelter. And we could put it right here. Now, you can also, if you want, push R to rotate things so that they like, you know, you could put them like this so that they're kind of like back to back and looks more uh, symmetrical or however you want to design it. It's kind of fun touch. It has no actual purpose for that structure. Now, some buildings it does, like you could see where the output is for the building, but um, to make more efficient pathing for your workers, but you'll see right here, all right, let me show you, like, this house is getting built. Actually, I'm, I'm curious to see how this plays out. Done. Yeah. So you'll see that even though it looks like a really tight fit right here, uh, the, the workers can kind of, like, weave in and out. They can walk through this house, and... They can put that in there. Now, it's not as fast as if they're on a road, of course. That's a that's a faster means of getting through things. But you don't have to worry about this blocking them and then them having to walk around, you know, the woodcutter's camp to deliver into uh, the warehouse where you see the white arrow. The front door of the warehouse is here. So they do need to come in and out here. And that could become really important for optimizing uh, the logistics within your base. But... Especially early on, I 
focus on doing my best with that and trying to put things close together but not losing too much sleep over it. Now later and in higher difficulties, the, you know, your margin for error will decrease and you'll need to be more proficient and mindful with that. But for right now, this is okay. Now you see on our orders, we've got the hut and we're just collecting vegetables to get that there. I'm actually going to mouse over this woodcutter's camp and push shift. Let's build another one. I still have six unemployed folk and I don't really need any building at the moment. So I'm going to put a woodcutter's camp down here so that we can cut into these glades. I'm going to actually um, preemptively select these places because you can do this in advance. And then once the woodcutter's hut gets built, they'll take care of that once they can reach it. Now, these roots can actually be collected by the forager's camp. So I will build another one. And when you have a building selected, what's cool that the game also does is every single resource that can be harvested by this hut will show up on the map. So you could see the roots and you could see uh, there's roots up here, there's roots over here. But these eggs, for example, aren't highlighting because that's the wrong type of node to be harvested. The flax doesn't show up, the clay doesn't show up. But the roots do, so I'm going to put a place over there to collect those roots. Then this woodcutter's hut needs people or villagers, so I'm going to see, I don't have any beavers, but I do have, um, you know, just some randos that I can throw in there, lizards and people. They're not the best, but they'll get something done. The order is done, I'm going to push T, and now you can see we do have a forager's camp, we do have the vegetables, so let's go ahead and do it. We get a buff which is giant vegetables. It's a perk. You'll see these, and I don't know if the game is just organizing them by rarity, um, but these, this is blue. This, oh, maybe it's by type. So cornerstones are purple, perks are blue. They're de facto the same. They're passive buffs, but this perk says plus one to vegetables production. Gain additional vegetables every yield. So every time you're gathering, farming, or producing, you're just going to get extra vegetables. So this is even better when we're collecting vegetables. Now they want us to make a stone cutter's camp and get some clay going. And luckily, we do have clay right over here. I'm gonna unpause it. We need to choose a blueprint. And here is the stone cutter's camp, as we discussed. So it's an advanced camp and it can gather large and giant resource nodes in addition to small ones. And what's sweet about that is it can go up to two stone or two star stone clay and sea marrow and what that means is it can do one and two we're gonna pick it because it's our only choice we're gonna go to camps and yep small or uh, stone cutters camp right here sorry is zero and again when i pick it the green area is where it, the workers can actually reach the area of influence and you see the clay right there in the southeast corner and when i move the green over top of it you see how the circles raise up and highlight with the kind of glow to tell you yep we can reach that clay and so i'm going to put it right here now this um woodcutter's camp is touching this so this is good but this is a, a fine time to move it once we cut through this, we're not going to be able to reach very much that's useful to us. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do this. I have, I have the game paused. You could do it even while it's moving. But you just select this building and you can either click this green button with the house and the arrow or just push M to move it. And then it's free to move it. And you pick it up and you can just put it where you want. And so right here, look how many forests it's close to. And I set it back down. And for a moment... It'll kind of slow the workers down, and then immediately they'll just go back to working, and it's done instantly. It's so easy to move stuff around, and it is easy because the game incentivizes you to do this. You need to be doing this all the time. All right, so they're building the stonecutter's camp. They're going at it down here. I'm going to close this up. Okay, great. So uh, this needs workers and humans have a bonus gathering here. So I'm going to put them over there. Another thing I like to do just while our people are working, I'm going to push 2 to go to 1.5 times speed. You see up here, if you're getting more of a resource type or category, 
you'll see that the arrow goes green. And if you're going down, it, it becomes red. And if you're stabilizing, it's there's no indicator. I use this to just visually see very quickly I'm running down on building materials. Now, I don't really care as much about that as I do fuel and food. Like if I see I'm flagging on fuel or food, if I have a red arrow there, it's immediately time to try to fix that because I don't want to starve and I don't want to uh, lose the hearth. But the hearth is going up and food is just fine. Now we've uncovered this glade, which has a small flax field, which is cool, but you know, we don't have, if I select flax, for example, you need to have a harvester's camp to gather this. And we haven't gotten the blueprint yet for that. So it's not as awesome for us. Okay, and here we go. You could see the Stonecutter's camp rising up. It looks like it's done, but it says 91% construction. So you just wait a second and then it flashes. As soon as you see that and the icon above asking for employment, you know you've done the right thing. I'm going to hold Alt and see who is free. Not many. But guess what? It's time to start reallocating. So I'm going to put one person here. I'm going to right click on this lizard over here and then drop them in here. I need the Stonecutter's for the quest more than I do this extra lumber or even these roots but there's no benefit um you can see the stone cutters gathering camp it doesn't have um like what the woodcutters camp has a specialization bonus so anybody does this of, of what species we have equally all right and it has gone into the clearance so we got through uh the bad period and well, we got through the drizzle. Now we're in the clearance. And you can mouse over this. It says clearance year one. So that's good. It's a beautiful time. You see the sun come out. But then in three minutes and 51 seconds, we're going to get the storm. And we're going to see what that's all about. Oh, we did. We completed the order. I'm going to push T and I'm going to deliver this order. Fantastic. So now they want us to build that harvester's camp. We were actually just looking at that for the flax. And they want us to collect plant fibers. And as a reward, we'll get this perk for rich in fiber and over here we got a perk for clay production we got a bunch of stone which is great they want to tell us about logistics and it says every building has its own internal storage and we've kind of been looking at that with how the wood was stored in the woodworkers camp where the goods it produces or gathers are temporarily stored when the internal storage reaches its limit the goods in it will be transported to the main uh, warehouse by a worker while transporting it's important to keep in mind that villagers have a limited carry capacity it's actually very small um, but as it says here it's dependent on profession and active uh, perks so you can do things to increase carry capacity so they might need to walk between their workplace and the main warehouse multiple times goods kept in the building's internal storage can also be accessed by workers from other production buildings as ingredients for recipes they're working on if two buildings are close enough and use each other's internal storage an animated dotted line will be visible between them after selecting one of them and so we'll look at this when we start building but it can really be useful to watch these dotted lines to see where things will link up and just like an anno or something like that you can with clever planning make it so that people never have to go to the warehouse as a middleman that they can go directly from the building's internal storage or dwarf fortress or something and they can move it to the warehouse or the workshop that they need it in sometimes deliveries for production might stall for a while because of breaks and you always this is important you have to watch this every few minutes workers will return to a nearby hearth to eat or rest during a break they'll consume at least one item of food to try to fulfill all their needs um clothing and services like they might want to drink some alcohol or they eat food and they look for the food that they want the best out of your selection if a villager has multiple needs tied to complex food they will consume more than one meal but um like for example let me see if i could find a structure to, that reflects that okay so you see how there's a little icon above the worker you can always check this means they're moving and you can see they're going to actually rest they're going to break and this means that they're gathering um, this means that they're moving goods to the warehouse they're fetching goods to go to a store so you could see where they are if like production gets behind now we need to choose a blueprint our only choice here in the tutorial is for the harvesters camp and we're going to pick it on pause so now we need to build a harvesters camp right
So let's build one and let's click on camps and go harvesters camp. Now, none of these are getting the yellow lines because this is a gathering point. This is not a production point. What I mean is the the harvesters camp isn't going to be pulling goods from another gathering place or workshop to produce anything. It's just going to be gathering stuff and then sending it out. So it doesn't have those lines. What you care more about with something like this is putting it within range of things that it can gather. So there is flax down here, but there's also flax up here. And the advantage of getting this flax is, number one, it's close to the warehouse and it's close to the hearth. So if they need to go take a break, they have to walk less distance. If they go to the warehouse, it's less distance. And all other places and workshops centrally located will be able to get to this internal storage. So that's great for why we would want to put this in the center. But also, if we gather all of this flax, remember this flax only has a certain number of charges, then it gets removed and this is free building space for us to build more shelters if we need to. And now the game is giving us an alert that we have no builders available because we've assigned all of our labor. So what I'm going to actually do is go down here. Now, if I look at this and I click here, you see I have 123 wood. So wood is actually not something that I really need. It's under the fuel tab here. So I can um, get rid of these two workers for the time being. You can do that by right clicking them or if you want, you can click the deactivate button. And I like deactivating because what it does is, you see how it says ZZZ, it means that it's not going to just alert you that this building needs structures. It's just going to, or like workers, it's just saying it's asleep for the time being. Now, after they finish building this, I might turn this back on and put laborers in there. And if you had laborers here, and then you deactivate it, and then when you turn it back on, I think that they come back if they're available. Don't quote me on that. I'd have to do science to verify that. But either way, it's something I like to do if I just don't need that right now. That's when I was in a surplus of workers. Now I have lots of jobs for people to do. All right. So this place, the harvester's camp, has no proficiency bonus. So I'm going to go quickly to just put the two workers here to prioritize this because it's an objective. It's an order from Her Majesty. So, here we go. We're still in clearance. We're rocking and rolling. And, oh, what did they find up here? See this um, exclamation point? This is a Glade event. Now, if I click on this, this is a Glade event in a small Glade. So, it's a relatively simple one. Usually, what you find out here are um, caches of supplies. Or, in this case, we found a destroyed camp in the wilderness. There are still survivors in the area. So this is another really awesome dynamic strategic part of the game is you get to choose. Would you rather welcome new people on this left path in the red and then as a reward you get what's underneath here on the down arrow which is that you get, we'd get a beaver, a human, and a lizard. Or we can send these people to the citadel and if we do that we get 10 amber. Now early in the game amber might seem pretty useless because we don't have a trading post to buy stuff. But Amber is really, really nice for purchasing upgrades or items or resources that you don't have or just that you really want. But right now, what we need is labor. You always have to decide, like, what do I need right now? Well, what I need right now are some more workers. I don't have any free builders. I had to put my lumber mill to, to sleep, so let's get some more workers. So if I want more workers, you need to mouse over what the objective is. They need vegetables. Or I could send them to the Citadel for eggs. So you mouse over this. You see how it says vegetables. And then there's the chest icon on the vegetable tooltip. I have 61 in my inventory. And it needs 4. But if I click on it, there's alternatives. And you can then see in this radial what other choices I have. I could actually give them roots. Or I could give them mushrooms. I don't have berries, so I can't do that. But all of these options are viable. Now, I'm going to leave it at vegetables because I have a perk to get extra vegetables, so that's easy for me. So I'm going to say, okay, let's do this option. You have to pick one or the other. Also, for eggs, you can do meat, you can do insects, or you can do eggs. So you can always check to see if the default resource you don't have, maybe you have one of the alternatives. Now, in this case, I've got this, but you need to work the encampment to... Um, make this happen basically so it's going to take one minute to do this I think 
the more villagers you put on this task, the faster it gets done. Um, but it just tells you how long it's going to take. So I need workers for this. So I'm going to hold alt and see who's working where. And what I'm going to do just very simply is say, I'm going to take off these humans and just put them right here. Now this human, the coffee cup means that they're like on a break, but that's okay. Now I always forget to do this and it's doesn't work if you don't do it you selected this you put workers if nothing's going to happen until you click this button at the bottom that says investigate yes it verified it was one minute you see how it was one minute with one worker but if i put the second worker we get it done in 30 seconds so let's investigate you can just put one if you don't care about a minute okay now i'm gonna um build a shelter I can't build it because I have no workers right now, but I'm just preemptively hashing this in. Why am I doing that, you say? I'm going to make it look like that. Because I know that I'm going to get as a reward three more uh, citizens, so I need to anticipate that and, and plan out for their arrival. Okay, we completed the orders and there is a encyclopedia entry that popped up on the side for the glade event and um yeah okay i think we talked about everything that we need to for this but you could look at this if you wanted extra info um but basically in a small glade it'll be really straightforward you get to pick one of two reasonable options but in the dangerous glades you'll get that and then there's like maybe negative effects happen while you're trying to resolve the issue it'll be like an ancient ruins that you need to purge or burn down or fix or something and it's negative effects happen in the working process but if you get it done you get a huge reward but for these small glades it's really easy i'm going to push t and go to orders we have completed this order we deliver it we get this rich in fiber to boost our plant fiber production we get an extra queen's grace and now they want us to make building blocks they want us to make planks um, bricks and fabric and they want us to make it in the crude workstation which I'll show you in a moment as a reward we will get the workstation upgrade which is fantastic and we'll get some parts so one of um, I'm gonna unpause it the buildings that you always want I got to go to blueprints though I didn't have this you start usually with crude workstation by the way um, no builders available indeed once they finish this it'll be fine so we finally have our first industry building which is a crude workstation this is the worst efficiency building that you can build for producing these things but early on it's the best option it's the only option really and so you need it's one of the buildings that you just build first or when you as soon as you can because you never know where you're going to need these things but you might not just put laborers on it until it's ready now you see all these arrows these are the places that i can draw from the best place for me to put this is right by the workshop um, because this is the most common place for me to draw any extra resources so i will put it right there and um newcomers are waiting oh we got newcomers too so in the upper right this little kind of like i don't know lion koala i don't know what this is newcomers button click on it oh i guess it's a duck build platypus um it's a uh, pervin runebeak the royal Stormwalker. these people have been sent here by the crown which group do you want so it's another choice for us which group do we want this group gives us three villagers this gives us two but in addition to just villagers you also get these rewards down below like grain on this side or veggies leather and stone on this side now i am going to take the option on the left and i'm going to do that for two main reasons number one this is more villagers which i want the more villagers you have it is important to note that it makes the forest angrier so you increase the forest enmity um when you have more people that's true the multiplier goes up and it takes more food and shelter to facilitate them that is true but you get more done so i usually pick this unless i'm like 
strapped for food. I'm somehow worried about the enmity of the forest or the rewards on the other side are so great that I want those. The final consideration would be, do I like, what if they were going to give me two beavers and I really needed wood cutting and this option only gave me one, but gave me a lizard and a human. I might actually take two beavers because I'm like, I need two specialists. But right now I like the, the spread of all of these different ones. The lizard isn't really shining so far because we haven't been building structures that they take advantage of, but I like this, so I'm going to go over here. I want three. Now, um, we see that we have six that are homeless, so I'm going to go to shelter right away and just start throwing in some shelters. And I'm going to put it so it's like this. It looks kind of strange, um, but hey, do what you do. Remember, it doesn't really matter. They don't need a place to come out. They can walk right through this. Okay. And now I have eight unemployed. So I am going to hold alt. I'm going to just put a human back on this job. Not a lot, but one is fine. And then I'm going to put this beaver that we got down here onto the woodcutter's camp. And by doing that, it automatically um, turned it back on. It activated it. And here we go. A couple of things are happening. We found another, we uncovered another glade. This glade has clay deposits, worm tongue nests, which are insects, and a small encampment. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to say, okay, well, what do we get? This is the same kind of thing. New people or um, amber. I want the people because, um, I, you know what? I love this. I've been struggling calling everyone people and then worried about my terminology because I didn't want to be anthropocentric, speciesist, you know, but the game calls them people right here. So you can say villagers, you can say people. I'm going to run with that because there's a lizard that they're calling a person. If the game is doing it, I'm cool with it. All right. So anyway, um, this is maybe the lizards want to be called people and I'm being a jerk by not calling. Mean, I don't even know. So I'm just I'm just trying to be friendly to everyone. I love all these species um, where we're trying to survive and serve the queen as the viceroy here. That's my job. Okay, so we're going to take this path on the left. Vegetables are fine, and I can just put anybody I want here, so I will. Investigate, and then that's going to start happening. They're building the houses. They're rocking it. And now you can see that this is the warehouse. I'm going to kind of click on it to show you what's... or the warehouse it's the workstation which is above the warehouse so this is where you basically start refining materials raw materials that you gather and producing kind of like tier two materials for advanced construction you take wood you make it into planks you take fabric or you take um fiber rather and turn it into fabric or you take just lumps of clay and you make it into bricks and you take copper, which we don't have, and make it into pipes. So, a couple of things I want to mention about this. Number one, the quest wants us to make, I'll uh, close this for the moment, planks, bricks, and fabric. So they're all equally important. If you wanted to make one over the other, you could change the priority of construction, or you can just toggle it off and be like, don't make anything but planks, so I guarantee what you're making. Also, it tells you how long it's going to take to make each one. So I'm going to right away assign some workers. There are no proficiency bonuses for this structure, so I'll put a lizard and a human right away on this job, and then they're going to start doing it. Now, I also, it looks like I have another beaver. I'm going to put them at the woodcutter's camp. You can also mess around here and... Oh, limits are locked. Never mind. I can't change priority and I can't change the limit. It's the tutorial. I apologize. I spoke out of turn. That is something you'll do later. Just not right now. It's too early. Uh, we uncovered a new glade down here. This glade has clay and flax. Fantastic. And looks like we have an, uh, another group of people that are uh, without a home. So let's go ahead and build a shelter. And I'm going to rotate it to kind of do that. Now, 
we are in the storm. So the storm is going on, and while the storm is going on, you can see this debuff is active. It says, um, Looming Darkness. Active only in the reason, uh, season storm, and um, it's minus four to global resolve because of each level of hostility that we have. But because our level of hostility, or what I was calling it, enmity, um, the hostility, I think enmity is, uh, it's from a different game, which is also a good game. But anyway, um, hatred, hostility, it's right now zero, so the storm doesn't actually hurt us. So we can just keep working through the storm, but usually you'll see that, um, oh wait, never mind, I mis misread this. It is giving us minus four to our resolve, which you can see over here. It actually represents as um, differently for each species, but minus three, and then I think we get the plus one from the hearth, which is this calculation, I think. Let's see. Hmm. I can't quite tell exactly what is doing that, but um, that's what I predict is going on. And we can... They all have a house, I believe, so that's okay. But once we get through this... It'll be fine, and you just get used to it. There's nothing you can do. The storm stinks. Like, everybody knows it. It's just a way of life. But once we get through it, it doesn't last very long. You'll be on your feet in no time. And how are we doing here? They are making stuff. And this one is getting clay, and this one is making bricks. So they're, you know, going for bricks at the moment. Whatever. That's fine. If you wanted to, you could make another workstation to expedite this process. Now I'm going to hold Alt and see what my labor situation is like. And I have five folk who are doing nothing, so actually that might be a good idea. So where are we? We're chilling. We are working on clearing out this tutorial mission and you see that we have five reputation and we only need two more to win so we're doing really really well i might just go ahead and build another workshop to get this done closer i'll push shift and then we could put it like right here for example and we can rotate it around to make it look symmetrical like that and then just put people on there and deactivate it if we don't it's worth mentioning that like some games if you have a building there's like some ongoing upkeep cost or tax for having it Near as I could tell, that does not apply in this game. It's really just like, once you build it, the only cost was the initial resources that you sunk into it. But after that, you just deactivate it, and it doesn't cost anything to maintain it. Okay, awesome. Everyone, I hope you're still finding this Beginner's Guide series on Against the Storm to be useful and fun. Thank you so much for watching. I will check you guys in the next one. Take care.